Welcome back. Political commentator Mwelet Mbeki says that the ANC and the EFF stance on land expropriation without compensation is an attack on white people and propaganda aimed at getting votes. My guest now is EFF Deputy President Floyd Chivamba. Floyd Chivamba, welcome to the show. Uh, the ANC goes to a two-day conference, comes back with resolutions. Are you encouraged? Are you happy? Are you getting what you want? Look, I think that the ANC is zigzagging on what we agreed upon in Parliament. So the National Assembly on the 27th of February mm. took a resolution to establish a constitutional review committee to do three things. One is to review and amend the constitution in order to permit for expropriation of land without compensation. Mm. Two is to look into constitutional amendments that will deal with land tenure. And it says there that uh, they must take into consideration that the state should be custodian of all South Africa's land. And that three, it must report back to parliament by the 30th of August 2017. That is what we're instructed to do. Mm. Now the ANC is zigzagging and saying this and whether why we must... It, why is it, the why are you saying it's zigzagging? It went, it had a two-day two, uh, conference, it's going to the, its the, national the, executive, the, and it will come back and say, the, no, we don't want the to... Reason, the reason why we're saying that zigzagging is because uh, they are now saying that they're going to try to attempt to... A to, to implement expropriation without, con without, without compensation within the current constitutional framework. Where, well, more than 70% of public representatives in the National Assembly said go and review and amend the constitution to allow for expropriation without compensation. So that is a fact in terms of how the whole process has been dealt hold, with. Hold on. You're holding a gun to me and to the rest of South Africans. You're saying, oh, it's a fair complete. It's already done. So, so there's no that is, need to that go is, and have that is, that, is, that is a principle agreement to which the, the representatives of more than 70% of voters in South Africa mm. uh, resolved on the 27th of February this year. Mm. It's not me saying that it's a resolution of parliament which I've got a copy of, which <laughs> is accessible, which is accessible in the parliamentary website in minutes in terms of what was resolved. Yeah. But of course, like like the ANC always does, mm. got, they've got a right to could zigzag and, and but they've also their got own the right to apply their minds and come back and say, oh, why are we changing the constitution? We can expropriate without compensation. Now, the constitution that they are saying must not be amended. They, they want to, uh, to implement and uh, uh, expropriate the land without compensation. Yes says in section 25 one that no one may be deprived of property uh, by any law of except when there's law of general application right and then part two of that says that if the state expropriates it must be for public interest and purpose but that must be subject to compensation and the monies of that must be agreed upon by the people who are affected. Mm -hmm. So that's what the constitution says. There's no confusion about it. So I don't know what is this narrow legalistic approach which the that, ANC that, that will, is trying to apply to a political Several problem. I've had several jurists uh, uh, advocate Tambeka Nukai Tobi the other day, um, uh, uh, Ruth Hollett plus others have said exactly the same thing that, oh, you've got all these other mechanisms. Why are you going for this particular one? Uh, unfortunately, you're making reference to liberal uh, jurists who, uh, who want to protect this liberal constitution at all costs, whereas majority of you mean the, the members of parliament, of South Africa for it is a liberal. Living. Yes, it's a it's a liberal constitution which sought to protect the economic interest of those uh, that lost political power in 1994 but retained economic power. So that is how it was designed. It was a product of negotiations and selling out in certain instances. That is why Section 25 is one of the areas that we say that must yes, be looked into as part of the new regime of, of change. Africans who voted for a party that continued with it, or 69 percent under Tabo in 2004, don't seem to have a problem with that constitution. But the party, so you might think the party, it's liberal, the it's party. Liberal. All I'm saying is, is this is the constitution we have. The party, the party that uh, enjoys 60, 62 percent support in South Africa has now said that there must be expropriation of land without compensation. They, they came out of a conference with such a mandate. But now you've got te technocrats and, and charlatans and all sorts of uh, chance takers who are trying to interpret it in an opportunistic way and even inviting liberal uh, lawyers to come and advise them in terms of what should happen to this otherwise progressive resolution which they took out of their let, own conference. Let, let's move on. I mean, I don't know if I want to say advocate Nukai Tovi is uh, liberal and all these other names, but uh, uh, it's, uh, it's your opinion. Yes. Can I ask you, uh, Julius Malema, 
once said in November 26 that if you see beautiful land um, uh, when he was addressing a meeting, he said, occupy it, uh, it belongs to you. Uh, do you worry that these kinds of utterances would have a, an adverse impact on uh, the economy and so forth? You know, you must look into the constitutional uh, court judgment that dealt with the issue of land occupation in South Africa. Mm. It actually forbade the state from evicting people who have invaded land if it has not done so within 48 hours. Mm. So the constitution and the constitutional court mm. appreciates that from time to time people will occupy land and that is a struggle which we encourage as the EFF. There are beneficiaries currently of land occupation programs that happened post-1994. You would know that majority of the times black people got to settle comfortably in the so-called townships now because of land occupation. Almost everywhere, even where in Winnie Mandela, uh, informal settlement, even Soweto was a product of land occupation program. So we're encouraging that within that particular context in terms what is of what happening, For example, a week and a half ago in Protead land. We, 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 we encourage that, that if people are, are, are congested in informal settlement, with no, with, no, with no proper infrastructure, but there is land which is not being utilized. They should occupy that. That is the policy position of the EFF, and I'm not when, apologetic when about it. the government it. of the day says, this land is at the moment being considered for human settlement, we will put in the infrastructure that's necessary. Shouldn't people say, we believe in this government, we voted for it, we're going to wait? You know, you must understand something which uh, we propose as a sustainable resolution as the EFF, right? We say that the first step is that we should amend the constitution to permit for expropriation of land without compensation. Mm. And then secondly, we must then pass legislation which will give land tenure to the custodianship of the state. It happens in many other countries. Here in Mozambique, so, so the state is in ownership all of land. all the land, yes. And I'll give you context of why that is necessary. is because an attempt to redistribute land piece by piece, even without composition, will dismally fail because it will be subjected to individual court uh, challenges in terms of what should happen. So let us take all land and put it under the custodianship of the state like we did with the minerals in South Africa. You will know that the Minerals and Petroleum Resources Development Act of 2002 took all mineral rights to the hands of the state and whoever wants to mine in South Africa has to apply for a license. We are saying let us do to land what we did to minerals in South Africa in a much more durable and sustainable way. And then the redistribution agencies of the land which is under the custodianship of the state can be national government, can be municipalities, if agreed upon can be the traditional leaders as well, yeah. depending on what will be the submissions oh, of the I people on the ground. The, the, yes. Out of 257 municipalities in South Africa, only seven actually work. Look, they, they, and they, you want me the, to put the fate the, of land redistribution in the hands of those municipalities? We, 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 can, we can have a far much more clearer uh, mechanism in terms of what becomes the redistribution agents or agencies mm -hmm. in terms of the land that is under the custodianship of the state. But let me tell you something that you do not know, is that the land surface of South Africa currently is about 122 million hectares. Mm -hmm. The state controls about 25% of that. And a lot of investments, by the way, in South Africa currently, goes into land that is owned by the state in, in special economic zones, that is owned by the Department of Public Works, and by, which is owned by the Department of Fisheries and Forestries. Almost all plantations where forestry business is happening is leased to the businesses that are doing that, and the state can reclaim that and give to whoever wants to do plantations and forestry business in the manner in which they want to do it. So there is that model, but in a small portion of land. Okay. That is why I was saying let us expand the custodianship to all the land and give access to all people equitably. If you're going to do it on a case-by-case -case basis, you will not be able to redistribute the land. We'll speak 20 years later, we'll still be stuck in a situation where black people gain access so to just a small is, portion of the land. This is expropriation with compensation. You're going to take all the land, then you're going to say, oh, Justice, your house is worth so much on this. And then because Justice lives in Johannesburg, he gets a bigger amount. Uh, Mama Lala in Hamanskral gets, oh no, you're still there. So you're going to empower the rich. Thank you very much. Can I ask you one quick question? Mwelet Mbeki says land is just a ploy to get votes. Do you agree? I, I, I think the lesser we entertain madness, the better. We must not 
uh, entertain sickness of people who sing for supper and just go and make some inflammatory statements that do not reflect reality. The land question is a historical question that must be resolved. And at least black parties are beginning to appreciate that we must take back our land without compensation. The ANC just has to reform its ideological outlook. It will get to the table properly and we expropriate land without compensation for equal redistribution. Flo Chivambo, always a pleasure. After the break, our comment of the week. Stay with us.